So I saw this recent study that said that 40% of workers globally, globally are considering quitting their jobs and I had to make a video about it. Y'all know me, if you guys watch my channel, if you guys have followed me for a while, you guys know that I recently quit my job. I've been sharing what that journey looks like on my channel and I find it really interesting that a lot of people have been feeling the same way that I've been feeling. So I really wanna talk about this great resignation and what this means for our futures, what this means for companies and for employees. I'm by no means an expert on any of this. I'm not an economist. I'm not a researcher. I really just like to share my opinion on the internet and make a space for all of us to talk and share our opinions as well. So feel free to comment your opinions, your thoughts. If you disagree with some of the things I'm going to say, feel free to comment it all down below so we can start a conversation. So for me, this great resignation really comes at no surprise, right? People are realizing that no one really wants to work 40 hours a week at a company that they don't really care about. We don't need to be working 40 hours a week in order to be productive. And we definitely don't need to be in an office in order to be productive. I think especially with this generation, right? People don't want to be unhappy. A lot of us would rather be a little bit more broke than be unhappy working these jobs, right? Our mental well-being is a lot more important than making a lot of money. Climate change is happening. There's a pandemic. Like life is too short to be chasing after something that does not fulfill you. The standard route of working at one company for 20 or 30 years and climbing the ranks and trying to grow your salary is not a thing anymore, right? I think especially this year with companies trying to pressure workers to go back into the office, people are not as loyal to their companies as they used to be. And this is blue collar and white collar workers alike, right? We're seeing a mass resignation on all on all levels of the workforce and rightly so, right? The way that wage workers and essential workers were treated during the pandemic, I think it really comes to no surprise that they especially have been quitting their jobs at such high rates. But that all to say, with this huge shift happening globally, what does this mean for our future, right? What does this mean for the future of work? What does this mean for the future of our society and for us as employees or maybe not employees? One of my big guesses and something that I'm definitely hoping for is that companies are now going to be pressured to treat their workers better, right? Point blank period. If company loyalty is the lowest it's ever been, companies need to step it up in order to make their workers more happy. Well, the good thing is for, it's for job seekers is that they are not only successful in interviewing, but also getting job offers and multiple offers. So that means that companies are competing for top talent. And this means not just giving workers more benefits, giving them free food and fun parties to go to. This means actually paying workers fairly, right? Recognizing the value of their labor. And this is especially essential for essential workers, right? When we think about the entire definition of an essential worker, we cannot function if every trash collector or if every grocery store clerk decides to quit their job. We will not be okay as a society. And so I read this article a few months ago about this theory called Bullshit Jobs by David Graeber, right? And it basically talks about how when corporations get bigger and bigger, there is more red tape. There are more rules and regulations that are put in place and there's more little system and processes that have to happen in order for the company that is getting bigger and bigger to function. So over the past century, we've created so many jobs that are not actually necessary for us to function as a society. So think about something like a clerk or an administrator, even something like corporate lawyers, right? Or marketers. I personally worked in one of these roles at Amazon, right? I was a marketing specialist, but a lot of my work was administrative, right? Because I was coming out of college. And so when I think about it, if all administrators and clerks and marketing specialists decide to up and quit today, I don't think that companies are going to be breaking their backs to try to increase salaries and try to fill those roles as quickly as they can. I think what's gonna be more important is for these kind of companies like Amazon who do have essential workers who work in warehouses and in grocery stores, I think it's gonna be more important for them to increase wages and salaries for these workers first before they try to increase them for workers in bullshit jobs. So I think, and at least I hope that we will first see the rise of wages and salaries for essential workers first, but we do obviously have these white collar workers who are really essential for um, corporations to continue running, especially tech jobs, right? So we see a lot of coders and software 
engineers, a lot of these tech companies do not want to lose these workers, right? So I do think that we will also see a rise in salaries and benefits and perks, especially in these kind of tech jobs. The last thing I will say is I think companies, as they start to kind of see this shift in company loyalty, I do think that we will see or at least I hope we'll see um, companies starting to shift back into a work from home kind of focused mentality, especially with the way that employees have been reacting to companies wanting them to go back into the office, right? I think we'll start to see companies kind of be a little bit more um, flexible with employees wanting to work from home as well. That's my first kind of theory is again, companies will step up their game, especially with essential workers. My second theory is that the value, okay, this is kind of a stretch maybe y'all y'all could just be like lynette chill but i think maybe we'll start to see the value of a college degree kind of start to go down and the reason why i say this is because with this microsoft study that was done that says you know 40 percent of workers want to quit their jobs we also saw that 54 percent of gen z workers in particular have also considered quitting their jobs right so more than half of gen zers who are currently working want to quit their job if gen z is not even fully in the workforce and already half of gen z wants to quit their job what does that tell you about gen z who is currently in school i think less and less people are seeing the value of this american dream that we were once sold right this american dream of again climbing the corporate ladder for 20 30 50 years whatever usually supports this push for students to go get a college degree back in the day a college education used to be seen as like this very prestigious thing but i think now especially with so many students having gone online for their college for so much of this pandemic, I think people are starting to realize that a college education is not usually teaching you what you actually need to know for the real world, right? I honestly saw my college degree as like a backup or like as a ticket into getting into corporate America, right? When we see younger people no longer really caring about having a nine to five, it also probably will lead to younger people not really caring about having a college degree either. And with a lot of people discovering that they have passions in other places, again, especially with the pandemic, right? People are realizing that there are a lot of other ways to learn how to do things nowadays, right? We have YouTube, we have platforms like Skillshare, which is actually the sponsor of today's video. If you guys have never heard of Skillshare, they are an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. They have such a wide variety of classes from experts in specific fields, from things like YouTube and content creation to financial literacy and productivity. And they make it very easy to learn and develop new skills, like to a point where when I took my first class, I was shocked by how much I learned in such a short period of time. So the class that I just took was by Marcus Brownlee and it was about YouTube success, how to script, shoot and edit on YouTube and how to just overall grow as a content creator. And so for me as someone who has been on YouTube for a while but still has a lot of learning to do when it comes to um, quality of my content and how to edit better and how to just step up my game, especially technically with my YouTube channel, um, it was really useful for me because I got a lot Lot of insight from someone who's been doing this for a lot longer than me and who has a way bigger career than I do. So a lot of what I know about YouTube, I used to learn from YouTube videos. But one thing that I like about Skillshare is their platform is very much curated specifically for learning, right? Which means they have no ads. They're always launching new premium content. So you'll be able to stay focused and follow like wherever your creativity takes you, right? So even if you don't wanna be a YouTuber, whether you are a hobbyist or you are launching a business outside of your nine to five and you are already really good at what you do, you are more than likely to find a topic for your skill level and for your interest. And they also have live classes. And so you get to experience these classes like in real time. You get to learn with your favorite popular teachers. You also get to learn alongside other creatives and students, right? So they have a community of supporters and people that you get to learn from and share words of encouragement, which I think is really cool. It's again, very like, I don't wanna keep comparing Skillshare to getting college education but I will say in the short amount of time that I've used Skillshare I've gotten more value educationally for doing what I do right now than I have for my college degree so like that's kind of saying something so thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video if you guys want to go check them out I will leave a link down below the first 1,000 people to click the link will get a one month free trial which I definitely suggest you guys jump on because that's an amazing deal so yeah that all to say I think with things like Skillshare I think people are starting to realize that a college degree is not necessary necessary for you to do what you want to do again for a lot of people don't get me wrong like doctors lawyers all these things like, of course you need a college degree while i have a lot of optimistic theories and opinions on what could happen with 
this great resignation. I do question whether a great resignation, whether this massive shift in mindset for workers and company loyalty will maybe harm us as the middle and working class more than that will actually um, benefit us. As history has shown us, the wealthy, you know, the people who own the means of labor um, will do anything in their power to keep profits as high as possible. And that a lot of times means using machines and AI and technology to replace workers where they can, right? I could definitely see companies investing in technology to replace workers before they would actually pay them fairly. As sad as it sounds, I can definitely see that being in our future as well. And we already kind of see this happening, right? We see AI replacing workers in warehouses and businesses. We see, you know, self-driving cars maybe that's gonna be a thing instead of Lyft and Uber drivers, right? We see Elon Musk launching these new AI robots that look like something out of a fucking movie. Like we already see this kind of starting to happen. So I do kind of question with this great resignation, with this push, for so many workers to want to free themselves of the slavery that is working for these corporations, will corporations in turn invest in this technology before they would actually pay workers fairly? As much as I would love to hope that companies will step it up and pay all workers fairly, again, especially essential and wage workers, I definitely do see a possibility for the latter. So, so yeah, that's just kind of all my opinions and theories overall. I think that this is crazy, like just seeing how many people are taking charge of their own lives, whether they are deciding to quit their job and go work for themselves or quit their job and go find a better opportunity elsewhere. I think regardless of what happens as a result of this great resignation, I think we can all agree that more and more people are starting to question everything, right? People are no longer allowing themselves to be brainwashed in order to get overworked by their companies. People are saying no to going back into the office. And I think it's awesome, right? I think it's necessary for more and more people to be uncomfortable with where they're at. The more that people are upset and dissatisfied, with their situations, the more change can be made. Again, you guys know I'm not an expert, so these are really just all my opinions. I would love to hear y'all's opinion down below and some of y'all's theories um, on what could happen with this major shift. If you guys did enjoy this video, definitely like it so I can know that you guys enjoy videos like these. I have such a wide variety of videos on my channel, but I can definitely cover topics like these some more if you guys enjoy them. Of course, make sure you guys are subscribed if you guys are not already to my channel, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.